let me just make my point here. So you have people talking about, well, how did he win Michigan? Because Democrats are saying, oh, she should have talked more about Gaza. No, union halls were empty. Dearborn went for Donald Trump. This is not about a micro issue like Gaza. It's people saying the cost of living is too high. The wages are too low. My life felt better under him. And I know what we'll say. All right. So as you might imagine, the ladies on The View didn't take Kamala Harris's landslide loss to Trump lightly. Now they're turning their frustration toward Latino voters who showed up in big numbers for Trump. This led to a fiery exchange between Alyssa Farah Griffin and Sonny Hostin, with Whoopi Goldberg eventually stepping in to calm things down. Today, we're going to break down their reactions. I'll kick things off with a clip where Alyssa finally starts to acknowledge a point many of us have been making about Harris's campaign struggles. Hey, well, Goldman Sachs says the economy will do better under her. The analysts at, um, at UPenn and Warren, well, we'll nobody who is struggling to make ends meet at the table, like, how am I going to pay this bill, cares what Wharton That's professors say about the economy. With well, let, 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 let me, and just one more thing I want to mm -hmm. say. This issue of abortion, which I hope we can unpack more, um, there are a lot of women who cared about abortion, but they were in states like Pennsylvania where they don't have an ultra-restrictive abortion law. They were voting more because they're like pocket bush, it, it, pocketbook issues matter more than if a woman in Alabama is able but to get an abortion. But they're going to do worse under a Trump administration. The only people that are going to well the millionaires and the it, billionaires. It, and, and finally, we talk a lot about these different demographics and these assumptions of where they're going to go. Latinos in Texas, a, dis, a district that's 97% Latino, went 75 percentage points for Donald Trump. Why? Misogyny. It's on the, no, that's it's why. on the border. It's the misogyny. border crisis is on their doorstep. So, so, and they were begging people to care about it for years. We need to take some lessons. If you're enjoying this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. But that the lessons are not Knock, misogyny. knock. Misogyny. Who's there? Oh my. Let's talk about the real stuff. Your pocketbook's bad, not because the Bidens did anything, right. not because the economy is bad. <laughs> The economy, the, the, your grocery bills are what they are, is because the folks that own the groceries are pigs. Yeah. But no one no, articulated no. that. Well, yeah. that's what I'm, that's what I'm yeah. saying, is that let's talk about the reasons why stuff, gas is high, not because the Bidens didn't try to help, but because the folks who control that yes. decided, I want more money. All right. Here's the gist. If you pay attention to Sonny Hostin's reaction, it speaks volumes. She seems focused on pointing fingers everywhere, but at the Democratic Party itself, which many feel has been out of touch with the voters who ultimately decided this election. It's like there's a reluctance to really accept what went down. Then Alyssa Farah Griffin jumps in to address a big point. Latino voters didn't necessarily support Trump because they're diehard fans. For many, it came down to financial issues. Their bank accounts and economic concerns drove their choice. So it's not so much about personalities here, it's about which party they feel is better for their financial well-being. Whoopi Goldberg had to step in because Sonny Hostin wouldn't let it go. She kept insisting that Kamala Harris lost because of sexism and misogyny, rather than looking at the top issues voters actually cared about, like the economy and immigration. For many, these were the core concerns from start to finish, and it's those issues that truly shaped the election. Some argue that this type of mindset within the Democratic Party, focusing on social factors rather than core voter concerns, has led to a disconnect, especially with Latino voters. Many felt Harris wasn't offering anything meaningful for them and only seemed to acknowledge their issues last minute. Whoopi stepped in, but even she had her own perspective, arguing that the economy's state isn't really Biden's fault. It's a complex discussion, showing just how many perspectives there are within the party. The reason prices are high right now is largely due to inflation. And just to clarify, inflation isn't caused by grocery stores raising prices, they're raising prices as a response to inflation. Inflation itself is typically fueled by government spending, which comes from the President and Congress passing legislation that increases spending, often in the name of public policy or emergency measures. What's interesting is that some people, who are quick to label others as spreading misinformation, seem to miss the real causes behind these economic shifts. For instance, Whoopi Goldberg recently made a comment suggesting otherwise, and it aligns with what President Biden said in his speech today, claiming he's leaving Trump with the best economy. This highlights the difference in perspectives on what's driving economic changes. And it's a reminder of how easily misinformation can spread on all sides. 